For 40 years, National Service has been a key pillar in maintaining a climate of peace and stability in Singapore. I've served both in SAF and, and SCDF, and I think it's very necessary because it's only through such regular courts that we always remember that the peace and stability is not to be taken for granted. Business is about profit and endeavour based on a calculated risk. So if Singapore can maintain peace and stability, the calculated risk will be more ensured. Foreign investment will come in, the local companies are prepared to invest more and all the general people's wealth will only grow together. As the regional security climate continues to evolve, the need for our national servicemen to maintain a high level of vigilance against multifaceted threats will grow. Our NS men from the Singapore Armed Forces, the Singapore Civil Defence Force and the Singapore Police Force face the challenge of serving a wider spectrum of operations while juggling multiple roles and commitments. They contribute not only to the defence and security of the nation, but also as active members of Singapore's workforce. Their commitment and dedication to national service keeps our forces operationally ready at all times. Saturday, Sundays are precious to us, but the fact that when there's mobilisation, there's no such thing as weekend, at the press of the button, we are back. With the constant emerging threat, be it natural or being man-made, it calls for a greater and active role to be played by NS men. Readiness is our only protection. Singapore is our home. It's where we live, it's where our family lives, it's our livelihood. We and only we ourselves can ensure our security and safety. All that put together, you have to say that it's worth the sacrifice for the peace of mind that you get living in Singapore. As socially responsible corporate citizens, employers play a vital role in contributing to national defence. It is their strong and unflagging support that makes it possible for our NS men to go for in-camp training and mobilisations with peace of mind. We have a very strict policy of no deferment for all our NS men. We have ample notice from MINDEF and uh, the rest of the units for call-ups and re we redeploy re our staff to make sure that work are not disrupted. So we have no problem in that for many, many years. I prefer not to defer because uh, if I defer, then I will join another group, then basically the knowledge that I will know will not be the same as the same group that I will be attached to. I know the support is there, some reinforcement is given in my absence so that I don't have to go back after my national service to a pile of work waiting and then that will make national service like a burden to me. We already have a co-CEO who actually sets the right tone in this environment. He does tend to educate us on why NS is uh, essential in the first place and why is he passionate about it and why our colleagues need to be there to be uh, actively participating in all this. If somebody else is um, away for a period of time, we just generally cover up for each other. Going through tough and realistic training, our NS men gain not only physical strength, but also mental fortitude and positive mindsets that they carry into their civilian life. A small company like us, you know, about 20 year old people, uh, it gets tough, especially when there are crunch time. To me, it's all about character building. Uh, if you look at a short term, then it is a loss to the company. But if you look at long term, it does help in the benefits of building up characters and the teamwork of the company. For NS men, we see the value in them in many ways. Uh, they are already trained in their fitness, they have the leadership, and they are decisiveness, and they are decision-making logic. Uh, it's all ties into our company philosophy. I've attended courses as a national serviceman where they help you to manage people better, they help you to be a better leader, they also help you and train you in the EQ area. These are important skills. Through my NS training, I'm able to adopt the core values of SCDF, pride and care. These values have taken me and helped me excel further in my civilian life, be it work or family.
By giving due recognition to Anna's achievements, employers show their appreciation to the commitment, dedication and sacrifices made by Anna's men in the course of duty. PUB has in fact jointly worked out with MINDEF, SCDF and police on a feedback system. Each of the officers, the senior officers who attend in camp training will get a feedback on their performance and such performance will be important for their performance reports. And on top of that, we make sure that any officers who get good reports on their in-camp training, the chief executive or heads of department will personally write to them to thank them. We give them monetary reward on top of what SAA gives them. And we also have a healthy employee scheme. So all those points that they get from IPPT will be considered inside there. Strong family support is another key cornerstone in motivating our NS men to contribute positively to national service. I motivate him, encourage him. I always tell him not to worry about what things happen in the house because I'm always there. At the end of the day, I'm so proud of him. Civil resource owners and companies also make vital contributions to national defence. They work closely with the relevant agencies and provide essential resource assets, services, as well as logistic support to keep our forces operationally ready at all times. Civil resource owners, we recognize them as one of our important partners because they form one of the economic pillars. Just as they have done well in the economy of Singapore, they have also contributed well to the uh, total defense requirement. For RSF. In time of need, we can easily uh, allocate about 80% of our resources towards these uh, the needs. By cooperating with the SAF, we feel that we are able to maximize our resource allocation, make full use of it, and then on the other side, SAF will have a broader use of all the equipment available. During peacetime, we cannot take for granted that. Once we turn on the water, we have water. We have about 30 teams of workers. Whenever there's a leak, underground water leak, we can be responded. Within two hours, the teams are fully equipped to do this work. 